The simple fact that one of the first shots of the episode features animation of Steven where he looks cross-eyed should really say a lot. If we do this right, we might get political favors. Washing a politician's car is not at all grounds for political favors. So I should say this here, I've sort of changed my opinion about the lower detailed background stuff I've seen in the past, the Lennies as I've called them. But this right here, the inconsistency of Steven having a Lenny face and Greg having a normal face when they're both about the same distance from the metaphorical camera, that's the kind of weird shit that does make me raise an eyebrow. In this shot, Dewey's head has his eyes colored in when they weren't colored in in any of the previous shots. In this shot, Steven is standing right beside Greg, but then in the next shot, he's gone. What the? Neither of them seem particularly phased at the sudden shot of water there. They didn't even flinch. What is with this cat? Are you fucking kidding me, Greg? Pretty cool, Amethyst. Amethyst. Why do Amethyst's lips look so swollen in this shot? If you go frame by frame here, Amethyst has her grip on the hose here. But then jumping from this frame to the next one, Amethyst suddenly lets go of the hose but still managed to tie it into a knot? It looks a little sloppy, not gonna lie. Also, in this shot, I assume Amethyst put the hose down to approach Steven here. But then in the next shot, the hose disappears. In this shot, Amethyst shapeshifts into a seal, but if you look closely before she starts to shapeshift, she's already a seal. So she turned from a seal into another seal. This part of Steven's eye doesn't have an outline in this shot. I'm slowly turning into the king of nitpicking, aren't I? <laughs> if there's something I can give this show credit for, it's that it actually does foreshadowing pretty damn well. <laughs> Think of what you want to be, and then just shake it out. There has been no instance of Amethyst shaking it out before she shapeshifts. <coughs> so, when Steven tried to shapeshift, he somehow managed to create an entirely separate life form on his finger. A, how does someone's gem interpret change my body's form into the shape of this thing as change a part of my body into this thing? B, from what we've learned of Rose and by extension Pink Diamond, she had no way of actually creating organic life aside from things like plants. In fact, there is no mention on the Steven Universe wiki about any way to straight up create anything. Even plants were just grown from a seed that we assume already existed, and even then we can assume she had to cry to grow said plants since later on, Steven's watermelons were made with his saliva. So please enlighten me here. How did Steven, someone who barely has any control of his gem at this point in the story, do something that Rose wasn't even able to do? What? Lars' reaction here makes him sound bored. In this shot, there's money on the counter, but then a couple shots later, it just vanishes. Really having to pull out the thesaurus here considering how many times I've had to come up with different ways to convey objects disappearing. I'm not letting this go. How is he doing this? Uh, oh! yeah! Did Steven almost just curse? Also, when Steven opens the fridge here, it opens to the right. But then when he's closed it, the location of the handle indicates that the fridge would have needed to open from the other side in order for its placement to make any sort of sense. We're taking the gem sloop out to sea to fight a living island. It really says something that we never meaningfully see this gem sloop again, because it literally serves next to no purpose. In this shot, the color of Garnet's chest is wrong again. I just turned all my fingers into cats! We have to stay and help Steven. No, Pearl. The correct answer is, how the fuck did you do that? Amethyst, I blame you for this. Eh, that's fair. <laughs> Again! How? Amethyst! Pearl! Garnet! <gasps> Dad! In what world do you think Greg would even have a remote chance of being able to help you? I mean, hell, you yourself even come up with the solution when you get over there. My life is over! I can't go on magic adventures! I can't even open the fridge! And I'll never get to have another water fight with you, Dad! I will say, I can applaud how dark the crew universe have made this episode. Because in a way, it really makes the show stand out and showed me just how different it was. To me, it's darker than even Frybo, which I see as a pretty great accomplishment. Turn on the super watch! No, I won't do it! It's too dangerous! Considering you're his dad, it's either he dies by his cat suffocating him, or he merely has a chance to die via superwash. I guess it's a bit of a brutal choice, 
But come on, surely you can see which one would be better for Steven. Either Steven still somehow has control over where his body goes despite all the cats, or the cats are willingly walking themselves into more water. Honestly, it's kind of stupid and illogical either way. Last I checked, water only annoyed cats, not literally disintegrated them. All this does is further make me question how this life form thing works, and once again, the show never really explains it. I find it hard to believe that Steven is just sitting there, kicking his legs without a care in the world after what he's just been through. That would have been a total catastrophe! And they ruined it. Thanks, Greeniverse. I'm feeling much better, meow! What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? I'm feline fine! Everything's perfect! I'm just kidding around! Whoa! <laughs>